In wrapping up today, our series that we've been going through during this 40 days of community, a time where prayerfully we've been able to experience a deeper uh, expression of what it means for us to live together, uh, one with another, but also moving in deeper relationship with God. At the beginning of this time, we said that we wanted to deepen our uh, time of prayer, our time of worship, our time of community, and our time of gathering. We wanted to really put some things before God because we know that God wants to do something special in us. Amen? Amen. So we started out, you can turn certainly here, Acts chapter number 2. We've been kind of preaching through this, this whole season and this whole last 40 days. So we'll continue to read this passage just to kind of give all of us context. The book of Acts written, amen, as a historical record of the early church. Those followers who experienced the life and the ministry of Jesus were told by Jesus to go into Jerusalem. Hang out there until you are given power, supernatural power from God to carry out the mission of spreading the gospel. And they were there in the book of Acts and the day of Pentecost came and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. And they all manifested all kinds of, of spiritual gifts. Some spoke in tongues. Others were prophesying. People were preaching and proclaiming the good news in such a way that their friends who had never heard this message before were immediately their heart was shifted and changed and they began to follow the ways of Jesus. And uh, we are picking up in the latter part of this passage because there were some folks who were trying to figure out what was going on around here. I mean, anybody ever try to figure that out in your life? Anybody know some folk who knew you before? Amen. Wow. None of y'all, none of y'all, none of like that. Amen. Y'all, y'all came out to mama's room speaking in tongues. Just sanctified. Amen. Just, just slid on out. Amen. Uh, Anybody, anybody got anybody that remembered it way back when? Amen. Amen. And, and, and now that your life has changed, they're kind of trying to figure out, what, what's, what's that all about? Anybody ever had that question asking, what, what is this God thing? What, what, you, you, don't, you don't talk the same. You don't look the same. You don't act the same. You ever had that, had that experience, that conversation? And well, it is this kind of conversation that is being had and, 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 and Peter, who turned out to become one of their spokespersons, stood up and he uh, preached his first sermon. And, and the verse number 41 says, those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day about 3,000 people were added. Brother Bill talked about this on Friday. Amen. Are you ready for the 3,000? Amen. That big increase that's coming in your life. Give your neighbor a high five and tell them I'm ready for some increase. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine? Amen. Can you imagine, amen, that there's something great that God wants to do in your life? That God wants to increase your joy. God wants to increase your peace. God wants to increase your power. God wants to increase your impact. God wants to increase every part of you. Well, uh, here we find that in that one day, 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Verse 43, and all came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They sold everything, their possessions and goods, and distributed the proceeds to all that had need. And day by day they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home, ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God. Somebody holler, praise God. Praise God. And having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. I don't know about you, but how many of you know sometimes when you keep adding things and adding things and adding things, there's a breaking point. When you just pile up, there's a breaking point. And uh, I believe that all of what we've done this month, the last 40 days, is getting you more prepared for your breaking point. A point where I believe everything in your life that must be broken, God says, I'm getting ready to break it. Those things in your life where you feel like it's just been this way for far too long. I hear God saying for these last 40 days, uh, I'm getting ready to put you in a position to break whatever must 
be broke. Part of what I thought would be important to give us even uh, a little bit more of a biblical foundation for this is going back to the passage I preached last week, Isaiah chapter 58. And I was praying and thinking on, on how will we end this consecration, this season of prayer. And I just was drawn back to this passage, uh, chapter number 58 of the book of Isaiah, page 601 in your church Bible, if you want to turn there real quick. But it goes back into the fasting, amen, and the reason why uh, we fast, and the things you and I can expect at the end of a fast and a consecration. Because how many of you know that if the only result of your consecration is you lost a, a, a size in your waist? <laughs> The only thing that's a result of your consecration is that you help two or three more people out. Then I believe there's a breaking point still that God is trying to get you and I closer to. I believe that God wants to break through some clouds and through some barriers in our lives. Verse number six says uh, uh, that is not this the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice? To undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Hmm. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them, not to hide yourself from your own kin. Verse number 8 says, then your light shall break forth like the dawn. Yes. Your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And you will call, and the Lord will answer. You'll cry for help, and he will say, Here I am, if you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the eat, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry, satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness. Your gloom will be like the noon day, and the Lord will guide you continually, satisfying your needs in parched places, make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Amen. Your ancient wounds will be rebuilt, and you shall raise up the foundations of many generations, and you will be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. It's the word of God. For us, the people of God, let us say thanks be to God. Let's speak and stay here for a few moments simply from the title, The Breaking Point. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you. Pray that you'll send your anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy. The rest of all, even hearers of this word, in Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of God say amen. Have yourself on the chest and say, I'm reaching my breaking point. I'm reaching my breaking point. It is no coincidence that we do these moments of consecration at the beginning of the year and somewhat at the middle of the year. Because I believe that certainly at the beginning of every year, there is always this opportunity for all of us to kind of think about how we want God to shape and structure the trajectory of this new season in our lives. Everybody's always real clear about New Year's resolutions at the beginning of the year. If you're like me for the last, say, four or five years, my resolutions have always been about me getting back to my pre-pregnancy way. <laughs> my resolution has been about me making sure that I can uh, be a, a, a more consistent forgiver of people that I don't like. My New Year's resolution has always been something around, can I be a better steward over the things that God has put in my charge, my family, my ministry, my justice work. And you can kind of create all these resolutions. How many of you made these New Year's resolutions in January? These kind of thick thoughts said, I want 2014 to be different than it was in 2013. Anybody? Anybody? And, and what's so interesting is by the time you and I get to June. Mm. <laughs> Somebody say amen. 
man. You, 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 you just be like, man, I don't even know what, what, you, you're not marking no progress. Some of us are often in the same place we were December 31st. So June often becomes another opportunity, I believe, in the life cycle or the, the, the salvific cycle of your spiritual development to kind of hit the reset button and say, God, maybe I need to make some new commitments to you because where I am now is still not where I want to be. So we engage in these moments of consecration not because we're trying to be holier than that. Not because we're trying to become some, you know, uh, you know, haughty, stuck up, holy woman. But we're doing it because if you're real with yourself, you know you still could use a lot more of God. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had a church in here this morning. Yeah. You want to tell your neighbor, I can use a little bit more of God. Amen. Amen. I, I, I love Erica's song. says, I need a little more Jesus. Yeah. And my daughter know that song so much. She be getting to the part where I said too, I said too much and almost cussed. And I look at my daughter in the back seat. I say, girl, you bet not be cussed. <laughs> But how many of you know that there's some moments in our lives where you can use a little bit more Jesus? How many of you know that the way you get a little bit more Jesus, you have to start intentionally giving yourself more of him? And it's not as if Jesus is sitting there stingy. I don't want you to have as much of me as you want. That's not a healthy relationship when you're rationing out yourself. You know, you have my toe today, but not my hand. You can have my, my, my head today, but not my, my arm. No, when you are in a relationship, you're supposed to give up everything. Well, how do you know that Jesus is committed to you? Regardless of what's going on in your life, Jesus is saying that I want you to have as much of me as you want. The problem is not with Jesus' availability. And, and, 
whatever it is you must go through. The early church realized that Jesus is leaving us quite a command. Jesus is leaving us quite an assignment. Jesus is leaving us quite a mandate to go into all the world and to reach people who don't necessarily look like us. To reach people who don't necessarily believe what we believe. To hang out with people who may have our interests far from their mind. And Jesus is saying, while you're in these places and these positions, I need you not to respond to them the way that you expect them to respond to you, but I need you to respond to them the way I responded to you. And how many of you know some of us need to be reprogrammed to respond the way God does? Lord, have mercy. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Some of us, some of us, we, we, we think that when we come to faith and when we come to a relationship with Jesus, that he only is intending to get us on a, in a service on a Sunday. And, and that's the extent of which why you and I are in a relationship with God. But how many of you know that the real walk with God starts when you leave here? When you deal with folk who are looking for God but need to know that God is real and the only God they'll see is in you. Sometimes we can't allow people to see God because God is not readily shining through us. So God is trying to change some things in our lives. God is trying to set you and I up so we can be a blessing to someone else. God is trying to set you and I up so we can be in a position that we Giving you this must 
understand. Now, growing up now, I know my dad had no intention. <laughs> he didn't even He was a principal. Amen. I used to say the same trick with my daughters. Amen. They want a dog. And I'm, you know, I'm like dogs. A puppy or something. And, you know, ain't no puppy coming to my house. Amen. Unless they got a job. Somebody say it. Yeah. What? 
how long. But in the biblical text, we see that when the when, when the break or when the light begins to break forth, the scripture says that the healing shall spring up quickly. One of the first breaking points that I believe God is trying to do in some of our lives is God's trying to give you and I some healing. Yes. Somebody holler healing. Yes. Healing is the result or is the manifestation of, of, a, of an illness or, or something in your life that's been broken, something that's been damaged, something that's been bruised. Yes. Healing is required when you have gone through something that has created trauma yes. in your life and it has caused you to be a less
God shows out. Pharaoh was hot on their tracks. 
the armies of Egypt hot on their tracks. And as you go on to read the text, it says that there was a pillar that led them in the front. But the glory of the Lord was their rear guard. Yes. Yes. And even though the enemy was pursuing them with all of their power and all of their expertise, they could not get past the glory yes. of the Lord. That the presence of God in your life can create such a buffer around you that even when the enemy is attacking you, the enemy can't penetrate. I know you may have a whole lot of struggles and trials, but there's a breaking point in your life where God is saying, if you allow my glory, my presence, the presence that I have made available to you through these last 40 days, 30 days, 20 days, 10 days, 3 days, however many days you participated in this time of consecration and community, God is saying that I have created some glory. And this glory has your back. This glory will fight every one of your backs. This glory means that the enemy is going to come in like a flood, but the glory of the Lord is going to lift up a standard of defense. It doesn't mean that you won't be attacked, but it means that whether it's that new school you're starting or that situation that you're dealing with uh, in your family or that struggle in your own mind, God says that I'm going to put something around you that will inculcate you incubate you, guard you so you will not be overrun by the end. Stand with me for a few moments I want you to close your eyes.